Hey Matthew, um, after watching your video, I wanted to kind of talk about a couple of things. Um, so first of all, the chemicals in our brains. Um, supposedly, they are the things that make up our consciousness. And, man, I should have made notes before this. I don't know how I'm possibly going to organize all my thoughts, but anyway, um, sorry. Um, the chemicals in our brain supposedly are what um, cause the functions of our consciousness. Um, though I should probably point out that we haven't really discovered what consciousness is yet. Um, as in how all the brain processes unite to form this one thing um, that is consciousness. And my school does a lot of research on cognitive science, and my teacher was saying um, that all she could do really for now was to cover the basics. And I'm just in a basic cognitive science class right now, but, but anyway, um, well, one thing I was thinking about was, uh, so what if our brains are functions, merely functions, physical functions, chemical functions? Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with saying, yes, we do have a consciousness. Yes, we exist in the physical world. And yes, this consciousness does have causes, physical causes. Um, maybe there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know. There's probably a, a philosophical word for what I'm talking about, but I never know what these words are. Um, yeah, so point that out to me. Um, so, right, um, so there's that, um, and language is the other thing that we've talked about just a little bit, language. Um, I also think that we don't necessarily have to demonize language, um, because I'm pretty sure that language has become more intricate as time has progressed and we've been able to not only build upon things but build upon concepts and build upon specific words to make more words until it's this very very um, intricate catalog of ways to describe the world and our experiences I mean nobody really wants to sit there and read through the whole dictionary unless you're crazy or you love words. But anyway, um, I think that um, one thing that I've noticed is that words, you can either say that they're limiting in that they make us think a very specific way, um, like as demonstrated in 1984 when bad becomes ungood and people start to lose the ability to um, express themselves beyond a certain point and they lose the ability to understand what they're feeling because there's no word to describe it. Um, well, first of all, it doesn't change the fact that they're feeling that. Um, um, although there's probably this uh, uh, frustration within them. But here I'm getting into you know, the consciousness of characters in a book, so I should probably stop. Um, I've noticed that sometimes maybe I'm feeling upset about something, maybe feeling upset with a certain person, um, can't really put my finger on it. Occasionally I'll sit down and I'll write down what I'm thinking and all of a sudden a light bulb will come on and I'll realize, oh, that's what I've been feeling and that's what I've been thinking. And I'll be able to articulate what it was that was upsetting me, and I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. Words are very, very, um, if you have a big vocabulary especially, um, allow for a very wide range of um, expression, and not just the words themselves, but of course the connotations that are attached to those words, and the way that we can fit certain words together, and fitting words together um, maybe even words that have very little to do with each other, as in poetry, 
sometimes creates completely new meanings that we can't really put our fingers on. And that's what's so cool about poetry is that it can use words to evoke emotions that we might not even understand why we're feeling in relation to those words. So I, um, I guess, if I had a choice whether to have words or not to have words, I would probably choose to have words. Um, well, um, I noticed that when I was younger, I didn't think in words. I thought in sort of concepts and emotions, just sort of this vague picture of how I was feeling, or maybe how I wanted to express myself. And then, as time went on, um, I really became uh, engrossed in the English language, and I loved to read, and I loved to um, write too. I loved to write poetry and and write little stories. Unfortunately, I haven't had that much time for that anymore. Very sad. Kind of tragic. Um, but just having uh, having words now, I think in sentences. Right now, in my current life, um, at this current time, I think as though I'm writing a book. It's all a narrative. And I don't know if there's anything wrong with that, but at least it helps me express myself, and even it helps me express myself here when I'm talking with you. And you get a much broader picture of what I'm thinking than if I were to just um, maybe not even use words. Although, um, I suppose with this particular medium, words and visuals are really the only thing we have, and maybe it would be different if we met in real life, and we could just sort of have this subtle understanding that didn't require words, but, um, yeah. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about? I can't remember. See, my mind is everywhere. Um, the fires are still burning, I guess. I haven't really checked on the progress of the fires. I don't really want to check on the progress of the fires. Um, but I'm pretty sure that we're not going to be evacuated. So, But some people I know are, so that's not good. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's all. So I'll talk to you later.